Matthew Laverteau is the kind of talent that you're either born with or you're not. It's a God-given talent, and it was given to this little boy with a sweet face that you want to love. He had the ability, the same as Laura, to touch you. And he could do that. I mean, he, uh, but, and I think, I, uh, I, I think Mike wanted a, a boy to be part of it. So it, it gave the show around us that it wasn't always Pa and the daughter that he could play scenes with the boy. Is he gonna make it? I'd say so. The doc said it takes some time. I think he made him strong enough to beat it. I hope so. Michael felt like Matt was really his son. That there was some identification there. And of course, I just adored him. I just thought he was a great kid. Albert, when this many people live in such a very small house, well, if one person is deliberately messy, then everyone suffers. But I like it that way. I'd done quite a bit of work before Little House, so it wasn't my first show. I think if, if it had been the first television show or acting role that I had done, it might have been a little more intimidating just because Michael Landon was Michael Landon and Bonanza and Little House and Little House. Uh, I was coming on to the third year of it and it was already such an uh, enormous hit and I remember watching Little House and being a fan of it before I was ever on the show. I first uh, came to appear in Little House um, actually playing a different character that than most people know me as, which is Albert, uh, the son of Michael Landon. I actually played Michael Landon as a little boy in flashbacks to his childhood. His father's taken ill and he takes a train and goes back to uh, check on his father and his mother and on the train ride he sort of reminisces about childhood. Tickets please. Michael wrote another show called I Remember I Remember which was another sort of flashback to to Paul Ingalls' childhood, but it was where Mom met Pa. Hello, Charles. And this is Henry. And it's Eliza Ann. Hi. And, um... Caroline. Caroline. Hello. Hello, Charles. It was just a really, again, just a sweet, tender, great episode with, you know, the the, the two kids having, you know, a crush on each other and meeting for the first time, and you see what what uh, what they eventually would uh, become and have the, the girls and start a little house in the park. Thank you very much. Charles Ingalls. The transition for me was when they, he wrote the part of Albert, the character of Albert, that was not in the books. It was um, uh, an added character because uh, Michael wanted to have a son on the show. How's that look, mister? You're right, boy. That's the best shine I've ever had. Here's a dime for you. Dime? Hey, thanks, mister. Ah, uh, you're welcome, son. Albert was the result of a very personal tragedy for Michael and his family. They had very, very close friends, the Muscatels, Eleanor and Ray, and their firstborn sons, uh, his name was Albert, and um, on the evening of the screening, I believe it was the screening of The Lord is My Shepherd. Someone came running in, there was some sort of an emergency phone call, and I remember the Moscatels leaving, and Michael and his wife Lynn leaving, and um, apparently Albert, who was about 18 or 19 at the time, had been riding home in the evening on his bicycle and been hit by a car and killed. And as a tribute to Albert Moscatel, Michael created the character of Albert Ingalls. Now you can't do that, sir. I've got money on how to tell it. They asked me if I would just transition into that role. And I, of course, was so thrilled and so excited, I couldn't believe that he asked. Um, so it wasn't a, a real nervous, gut-wrenching audition process. I, I'd already worked with the crew and worked with Michael, and it was just a great, easy, natural transition. Mister! When I think about Melissa Gilbert, uh, 
it's interesting because we grew up together. So on one hand, it was someone that I was an actor with and it was about going to work and doing a job and going home. And on the other hand, it was someone not only that I grew up with, but someone who was my sister for a good portion of my life. And that's my dime down the hole. Hey! Matt was a welcome part of the group from the get-go and he instantly was my brother as far as I was concerned. That fella gave me 10 cents. Nobody ever gave me 10 cents before. I remember when my character was first introduced, uh, when the Ingalls moved from Walnut Grove into the new town and I was the, the kid living on the street underneath the stairs uh, in the town. Chances, that's for your own good. The sooner we get to your place, the sooner you're going to get it over with. This is my place. What? This is where I live. One of the really fun episodes that I remember filming was an episode called The Halloween Dream. And we're getting ready for a Halloween party and I fall asleep and have this crazy dream about Indians and the cavalry and we come in and save the day and it's this real wild and wacky episode. The thing that I just remember loving about it was that even though we grew up on Little House on the Prairie and it was covered wagons and horses and we rarely if ever got to ride horses just because of the insurance factor and you know a kid falls off a horse and breaks an arm you know you can't have that happening. So it was really sort of the rare episode that we got to be on a horse and ride horses. And my brother Patrick and I owned a couple of horses, so we grew up riding, and I just loved being on horses. Darn feathers are itching me to death. It must have been 150 degrees in the shade. And the costumes, this wasn't a particularly great memory of the costumes, but they, uh, the costume were made a, an Indian outfit for Melissa and I, but they lined it with this phony... It was like a leather, but it was lined with rubber. So basically, we were wearing a rubber suit in the 120 degree heat for an entire episode. I think it was, you know, seven days, 10 days. I, we probably both lost about 20 pounds. Sorry I got you into all this. Mm. It wasn't your fault, Laura. Yes, it was. I'm the one who talked you into wearing that silly outfit. I think Men Will Be Boys was such a funny episode and just fun to watch. Well, it's sleepy eye. That away. What's funnier than watching two fathers who are trying to teach a kid a lesson and really, you know, hammer home a point that you're still just kids. And it turns out that they completely reverse the roles on him. Everything that could possibly go wrong happens to, uh, to Pa and Jonathan and it couldn't have gone better for the kids. And any lesson that they were trying to teach them gets completely lost because <laughs> they go through it with flying colors and the adults are the ones that, uh, that wind up, you know, uh, just having a lousy time and, and sort of getting a lesson taught to them. How much money did you bring? For what? For the bed and the food. How much money did you bring? You did bring money. Being able to work with my brother Pat on the show uh, was a blast, uh, obviously because it was just very convenient being able to get up in the morning and get in the same car and drive to the same set and not be on two different shows. Um, but yeah, it was just great being able to hang out with my big brother. All we have to do is make it look good. Albert, we made a deal and I'm sticking to it. We did a couple of football episodes with Merlin that were just a blast just because we got to dress up and play football all day long. Are you ready now? Go! I happen to be a, a huge uh, Rams fan. And uh, when I first met Merlin, obviously I was kind of awestruck just because here's this, you know, Hall of Fame football player and I was just so uh, starstruck around. It was interesting, I, I think I was more starstruck around Merlin than I was around Michael, if you can believe it, just because of the, the sports, uh, the, the football aspect of Merlin. There ain't no way we're gonna be able to run over Big Luke, at least ways not, with just one play left. It was uh, fascinating to watch Matt Laberteau uh, on the screen, off the screen. Uh, he had such a vulnerability. It seemed like 
I got paid to cry for a living on this show. That's pretty much what my character did all the time. <laughs> That's a pretty incredible quality for a boy. Because, you know, boys are, they don't, not gonna, they don't cry. They don't cry. And for him to be able to access that kind of, just a wide open emotion constantly, it was uh, remarkable. 